Hey guys, um, my name is Justin Lowry. I'm a landscape photographer living in Southern California, and I'm here today to give you a review of the uh, Loa Pro Photosport 200 AW photo backpack. And uh, my basic overall conclusion with this backpack, I guess I'll start with that, is that it's an excellent backpack for short day hikes that aren't too strenuous uh, with a very small minimalist uh, DSLR kit with maybe one body and two lenses. Uh, you could kind of squeeze three lenses if, you, if you're willing to cram your stuff in there real tight. Um, and you can carry a hydration pack um, and maybe like a hoodie um, and a few other minimal items like some granola bars and stuff, but you're really not gonna fit anything serious in here for a long hike. Um, it does, now here's the, so the pros of this bag, let me just turn this thing around a little so that you can kind of see it. Um, so you can see that the, the, the primary advantage of the lower pro design is that they open on the side right here, it's a side loader. So you can basically reach around and grab your camera body out of the bag uh, while it's still on your back, which is fantastic. Um, it's great if you're standing in the middle of a creek and you need to get your stuff out quickly without dropping your pack. Um, I don't have the camera in here because I'm filming with the camera. But um, basically, here's the problem <laughs> with this bag. Uh, this is the entire camera compartment. I'm not sure how well you can see in there. But basically, um, here's a Velcro thing. And I have one lens right here, it's in a dry bag, because uh, I do a lot of water photography and hiking. And um, then this is your camera compartment. Yes, that is it. So basically you can fit, like I fit a Canon 6D with a 17 to 40 in this main compartment. I've got my 14 millimeter 2.8 Rokinon Prime in the other compartment, that's it, I'm full. Can't carry anything else. Um, if I really, really, really squeeze, I can actually rearrange this a little bit and I've managed to fit a 70 to 200 f4L, a 17 to 40 f4L, and a 14 millimeter 2.8 in here. But it's really tight, and the items are like rubbing on each other physically, and uh, you could damage your camera body, you could scratch it, um, it's not really that great. I keep myself in dry bags, so I don't have to worry about that as much as most people probably would, but it's a pretty cramped camera compartment. So you can tell it was kind of an afterthought on the bag, even though it's a backpack for photography. So that's a downside. Um, uh, you know, here's one of the quote unquote most useful features on the bag. Um, the bottom here uh, has these straps and uh, you can strap your tripod onto the bottom there. Uh, if you're doing a real light, lightweight hike, that's probably fine. Um, I had mine out in Zion National Park doing 27 miles in the back country over extremely brutal, technical, rugged trails. And my tripod got smashed, like damaged. Uh, so not recommended as far as carrying your tripod on the bottom across like that. That's, and not only that, but one time it almost killed me. I was doing <laughs> rappelling and it got stuck in a rock crevice and uh, I was literally hanging upside down by my backpack. So probably partially my fault, but definitely not recommended as far as, uh, you know, uh, there's gotta be a better way to carry a tripod. I don't recommend carrying it on the bottom across like that. Um, it just gets too damaged. I mean, mine got all the paint scratched off, the head broke, uh, it's just a mess. Um, so you can do it if you're just like doing super lightweight hikes and you remember to very gently set your bag down on the ground without like dropping it. But when you're doing real backcountry stuff, it's just a pain. Um, these trekking pole loops do in fact work. Um, I had my trekking poles through there and what I did was, they don't really work that good for strapping your trekking poles on this way. Uh, what you basically have to do is, um, I got a couple of carabiners and I basically put a carabiner through this part right here and then uh, clipped onto the handle of my trekking pole and then ran my trekking pole through the bottom right here. And that worked. Um, so it can hold two trekking poles. This loop right here, as far as I can tell, is useless because it pulls the pocket open and it sags like really far. So you really can't put anything on this. Um, the main compartment is a traditional backpack, like your regular backpacking uh, type deal. And it does hold a lot of stuff. Um, well, com you know, relatively speaking for, for a camera bag, not for a backpack. Um, so here I have my main dry bag, my first aid kit, and uh, some of my like other medical and type supplies in there. Um, and survival equipment. 
Uh, here I have a white uh, jersey hoodie that I use to keep the sun off of me during extremely hot desert hikes. Uh, now this is my permits. Uh, a lot of these backcountry hikes you have to do with the whole winning the lottery thing and getting a permit. Uh, so these are where I carry my permits, my ID and other stuff for legal reasons. Um, personal information. And then um, you can sort of see the main compartment is not terribly roomy because the camera compartment is down on the bottom. So basically you have maybe like 9 inches of, of cubic, like 9 by 12 by 8 inches. It's not really a whole lot of space. Um, but you can fit a decent amount of stuff in there. And then it, uh, you can squeeze thin items in the back of the bag. So um, you can fit like for uh, maybe a six hour hike, you can fit all your stuff in here, but don't try doing like a real serious hike with this. Um, then it holds uh, a bunch of knickknacks in the top uh, compartment right here. And uh, this is where I keep my remote, some more survival stuff, uh, Germex. A lot of times stuff gets dirty. Um, some extra carabiners, uh, trekking pole caps. Um, this is a screwdriver for adjusting like my tripod or uh, other things have to be adjusted. Um, lip balm, flashlight, probably should be a headlamp. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, and then this is perhaps the most useful compartment right here. And on a hike, you can put a three liter, it's a very tight squeeze, but you can fit a three liter Camelback in here. Uh, and it comes out through the top here and then goes down your, your shoulder strap. And uh, what I use is a, let me get this stuff out of the way for you. Um, just chuck that over there. Hopefully you can see okay. Um, I use a platypus hoser. And I would recommend the Platypus Big Zip, which is the one with the zipper right here. Um, the Platypus bags were recommended to me by some guys at the local outdoor store. Uh, I mean, like, a serious backcountry store. Uh, they said these ones don't get moldy as well as the camel, or smelly, or contaminated as well as the Camelback ones. In my experience, that's been true. My friends have Camelbacks. Theirs got disgusting and moldy because I left them in the closet for, like, six months. Um, this one, fingers crossed. But I haven't had that problem yet, so we'll see. Um, it is a pain to fill up though, so that's why I would recommend the big zip, because you can actually unzip this end and just fill it up real fast, and you can also scrub it out. So anyway, this is the Platypus 3 liter, just to give you a size reference. Fits in there. Um, it's a very tight squeeze to get this thing into the hydration compartment. Then, uh, for backcountry stuff, um, I've modified my Platypus hose with uh, a Sawyer inline uh, water filtration unit. And what this is the lightest weight water fil complete water filtration system that you can buy. Um, you can literally fill your platypus up with dirty water out of the creek and then drink it straight away instantly um, with basically no resistance in the, in the line. So you can't even really tell the filters there. So it's an amazing, amazing system. Um, so that's what I have for hydration. Uh, so that's probably my favorite feature of the bag to be honest with you because obviously cramped storage compartment, another cramped storage compartment, so-so tripod straps, um, and it's just you know, a little bit flimsy. Uh, but I will say the one thing it did well, which is kind of crazy, is um, I had to swim with this um, in the subway top-down route in Zion, and it had just flash flooded the night before, and we were swimming in disgusting flood debris and like rocks and sticks and mud, and it was disgusting. Um, water over our heads and it was just really really messy and kind of scary um, for a while there because uh, the log had like jammed under the bowling ball section if, for those of you who are familiar with the subway and uh, a huge log had jammed under there and so we were kind of trapped in this crevice for like 20 minutes half hour trying to figure out how to get out and it was not fun um, but anyway here I am sitting here in water over my head trying to swim and like doggy paddle and do the stationary swimming thing and anyway with this pack in the water the whole time. And my gear was all dry bagged, but the dry bags were dry on the outside when I got out of the water after swimming through hundreds of feet of muck that was over my head. And 
that's impressive. So basically it's almost waterproof. Uh, you can literally swim with this bag and your stuff will stay dry. Now, the manufacturer is not going to recommend that. I'm not even going to officially recommend that because your gear could get destroyed. So you should obviously have it inside of dry bags. But it's a very, it's a very watertight, weatherproof bag. I've, I've used it in pouring rain. I've used it by the ocean with waves crashing down. Uh, I've used it, you know, in swimming in muck and creeks. And uh, it's just held up really well. So it is flimsy but it is pretty tight. It's pretty well sealed. So I'm sure they could do better, but it's not bad in that area. Um, but here's where the bag ultimately fails for me as far as uh, a serious hiking bag um, for any length of strenuous hiking. I mean, even if you're just hiking for four hours, um, a day worth of gear for me is about 30 pounds. And I know that's probably crazy, but you know, once you put in a couple of L lenses and heavy primes and camera body and tripod and trekking poles and three liters of water and the camel back and then maybe one or two other liters of fluids and then all your food for the day and your, your raincoat or your hoodie and your, you know, maybe a spare change of sho dry shoes for when you, you know, because sometimes you're going to switch back and forth with different types of terrain. It does not carry weight at all like it sucks at carrying weight it's horrible for that um these straps are really anorexic pathetic straps like these are not good um and these the anybody who's um a real serious um, backcountry hiker is going to tell you the most important part of the backpack is the waist belt this thing has no structure it's just it's just there as a formality they just stuck it on there so they can say they have a waist belt it's Look at this, it's, it's total, look at this. There's no rigidity at all. And this is a panel, it's not even a belt, it's just a panel sticking out on the side. Like, if this was a series pack, this should just be one semicircle uh, loop right here of very heavy duty, you know, three quarter inch thick foam padding, you know, with, and, they, and these straps here, they should be like, I mean, they're decent, but I think this should be an inch and a half and the buckles should be quite a bit more heavy duty. Um, so the waist belt is basically a joke. It keeps the bag straight on your back, but does not support or transfer any weight at all. You're carrying the entire weight on your shoulders and these straps right here are like two inches wide and have almost no padding. And so by the end of the day on both hikes, my shoulders doing, doing a 16 miles Nero's top down in Zion and doing a 10 mile subway top down in Zion, my shoulders were like sore, aching, like my skin is breaking out in hives from all the friction because the thing doesn't stay still and just constantly bounces around and rubs on your shoulders. And I'm just wearing a thin t-shirt. So honestly, the suspension system of this pack, which is what this is called, is a total fail. Zero stars, one star, whatever. It's just pathetic. Um, so I really wish they'll rethink that for future editions. The only part I like, kind of, is of the suspension system is the back panel right here, which is nice. It's pretty rigid, has some decent padding, decent ventilation, but my back gets soaking wet in like 20 minutes of wearing this bag. So the ventilation basically sucks too. So I, I think that Lower Pro needs to look at some serious backcountry packs. You know, maybe some from Osprey or, you know, Granite Gear or Arcteryx or uh, Marmot or, uh, you know, Black Diamond. Um, but, yeah, they suck at making suspension systems for backpacks. Um, so they really need to work on that. Um, so the other thing I think they need to work on is uh, zippers. The zippers are okay. They're decent. But, um, I mean, I guess they're better than, like, a, a, an average backpack zipper but they're nowhere near as solid as they should be. So I think these should be seam taped, like water, water resistant zippers with way heavier pulls and uh, you know more rigid. Um, and most importantly, the storage volume on this is really, really, really lousy. Like they need to put a lot more space in this thing for your camera gear in the main compartment. If they're gonna call this a professional photography bag, uh, it needs to have way more storage. Um, and obviously they're gonna have to make the pack bigger. I realize that's hard. Um, the thing weighs 2.8 pounds. That's pretty decent uh, for what it, for a backpack, but um, to put that in comparison, you know, the uh, Granite Gear AG50 is a 50 liter pack that weighs 2.9 ounces, or two pounds, nine ounces. Uh, so 
yeah, this thing probably holds like 15 or 20 liters. Um, it's so <laughs> they could definitely make it hold like twice as much gear and keep the weight the same and be way better built. So they're not really trying very hard. Uh, so would I recommend this bag? <sighs> As a day pack to keep in your car, like if you're going to the beach to shoot some waves, yeah, sure, it's fine. Uh, if you're going to do like a quick, you know, pull up to a scenic overlook and walk, you know, 100 yards to take a photo, great, sure, do it. Um, if you're going to do a serious demanding hike, like if you're going to go to Zion National Park and do the subway or the Narrows, if you're going to go to, you know, some other major hike, you're going to go to Valley of Fire even, which is like half mile hikes, if you're going to do... Uh, Oregon, you're going to do Eagle Creek, uh, you know, any of that sort of stuff, no, Dead. total fail. Um, my recommendation and what I'm actually doing is uh, I'm going to pitch this thing and uh, I ordered a new backpack, which I'll review later, uh, which is the uh, Black Diamond um, Mercury 65. And after doing a ton of watching backpack reviews, and just doing a lot of head-to-head -head comparisons and just shopping around and looking at all the different options. The solution that I came up with for hiking photography, which is the same solution that a lot of other serious landscape photographers have come up with, is buy a awesome, amazingly built, you know, backcountry backpack. Something designed for backpacking. Like, designed to carry a week's worth of stuff for camping. And then, retrofit that with a camera compartment for your gear and just buy whatever size camera compartment that you want to fit your gear put it in there and you know that becomes your photography backpack and um, you can get stuff uh, I, I should probably cover this in a separate video but you can get the granite gear AG50 that's AJI 50. Uh, that's a $229 bag. It holds 50 liters, has a double panel loader in the f zipper system in the front where you can zip it from the top or the bottom or the side, and it's really accessible. Weighs two pounds, nine ounces. Incredibly well built, awesome suspension system. It can carry 35 pounds without breaking a sweat. It's a great bag. Um, you can also look at the um, Mountain Smith Ghost 50, which has another great, amazing suspension system, can carry 45 pounds of gear comfortably, and has a the best ventilation system of any pack out there, as far as I've heard. It holds 52 liters of stuff, actually. And um, that was another option I looked at. And um, the one I finally settled on is the Black Diamond uh, Mercury series. And you can get the 55 liter, the 65 liter, or the 75 liter. Uh, the prices are two thirty nine, two fifty nine, and then like two or no two sixty nine, and then two eighty nine. Um, I found it on sale on Zappos.com for a one eighty nine, which is a great deal. Um, and I got the sixty five liter. And the reason I got the sixty five liter is that the fifty five liter is better for most of what I do. But if I want to do like a serious overnight trip with a tent, sleeping mats, food, changes of clothing you know, full camera setup, tripod, lenses, body, spare batteries, and so on. Um, I really want that extra 10 liters of storage space uh, for that. And the packs are functionally identical between the sizes. So I figured that the 65 liter is probably the best in between. I could have gone up to the 75, but I'm not anticipating doing anything longer than like two to four days of hiking. Uh, you know, as far as overnight trips go, so I didn't figure I'm gonna need something that's 75 liters to hike, you know, to do an overnight trip. Um, but I thought 65 is enough. Um, the downside to the Black Diamond Mercury 65 is the weight. It weighs four pounds, 11 ounces, which from ultralight backpacking standards is pathetic. It's a beast, it's a monster. But um, the reason I'm okay with the weight uh, is that every review that I watched or read said that the pack was like carrying a cloud. Uh, there was a landscape photographer that said he went on, I think it was the Appalachian Trail, with like four lenses and a pro body and a tripod and all his camping gear for overnighting. And he said that it, w it was a dream. Like the thing just carried extremely well and felt like nothing on his back. And 
that's what I'm looking for is something that really carries well uh, and has an amazing suspension system. And so that one does have an active uh, suspension system that moves freely, has a very sturdy waist belt, has extremely sturdy well padded straps, uh, carries weight extremely well, and it's a hybrid similar to this Loa Pro bag uh, of a traditional ba tube backpack with a cinch top and the rain cover. and a double panel loader, which means that the front of the bag actually opens like a door and you can just have access to the entire contents of the bag. And there's actually dividers that let you divide it up. So you're almost like opening a locker. Like you can open a huge weather sealed, uh, taped zipper, heavy duty, well built, unlike this one. Um, and you can open it up and then you have your bag divided into compartments and you've got your camera gear in there, you got your camping gear in there and you got your food in there. and um, Everything's instantly accessible, well organized. Uh, you can zip it open and have access to your gear in a matter of seconds, which is important for me. And um, then it's got a separate storage compartment on the front as well. So conceptually extremely similar to the Lower Pro, but build quality and ride quality as far as the suspension system goes uh, and weight carrying ability and storage capacity. I mean, it's just it just blows this thing out of the water. So. Um, and here's the dumb part. The price of the lower pro is like 150 and the price of the uh, Mercury 65 was 189. So price gap is pretty narrow considering a colossal jump in performance. So there you do, there you have it. Um, that's a few options. Yes, there are many other options and I'd be welcome to hearing suggestions. Um, I'm always looking for new ideas and things to try out and read about. Um, but that's my view on the backpacking uh, with photography gear situation. Uh, one last word. You're going to need an inside uh, camera compartment if you opt for one of these bigger bags. And so I went with one from Timbuk2. They have uh, three different sizes that they sell. Um, I got the small size um, because that's comfortably going to hold like a 5D or a 6D uh, and like three professional grade lenses, which is all I need you don't want to get something that's bigger than you need because that's going to take up space in your bag. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be annoying to deal with. You always want to get exactly what you need and not anything else, not, nothing more, because um, you really need to have all the space left in your bag that you can and all the weight that left that you can. You know, save weight, save space. So I got the small. I probably could have squeezed by with the extra small, but it would have been kind of similar to the lower pro, which I don't want to deal with that again. So. Um, I decided to get something a little bigger. I did not get the medium or large or anything like that because um, I don't want something that's going to be bulky and take up most of my internal storage space in my backpack. So I want something that's going to be really small and light. Um, you can also get the ICUs from F-Stop Gear, fstopgear.com, who also make the F-Stop Mountain Series bags such as the Satori and I think they have one called the Kenti and uh, some of these other ones. Um, why did I not get the Satori? Because that's a 65 liter pack that's designed for carrying photography gear. Good question, and I'm sure it's one that's gonna come up. Uh, the F-Stop Satori, uh, when I looked at it and did all, watched all the reviews and read all the specs and everything, number one, it's super hard to get. It's back ordered like almost all the time. Uh, but number two, you're basically buying a backpack. It doesn't even come with any storage for camera gear. It's not a camera backpack. It, it's just an ordinary backpack. You have to buy the ICUs before it even stores anything. And those ICUs cost like 90 bucks. So basically, and then the backpack itself costs like $359 versus 189 for like top of the line, amazing, incredibly well-built backpacking bag. So it's highway robbery, the price. It's back ordered all the time. And it's just an ordinary backpack. So once you decide that the F-stop bags are just an ordinary backpack, now you have to judge them against all backpacks not against all photography bags. And I think that's an incredibly important distinction to make. So what you want is the best backpack, period, full stop. You do not want, oh, it's a good photography backpack. Well, who cares? And photography backpacks suck. They're not really designed for real backcountry stuff. So um, that's why I decided against anything from F-Stop bags. I mean, I don't hate them or anything. I'm sure they're a great company. The F-Stop Satori has excellent reviews but I think it's way overpriced and it's not really anything special because as soon as you consider it to just be a backpack to store your stuff, I mean, the suspension system is average. The build quality is good, yes. Um, the storage capacity is average. Um, 
the price tag is ridiculous. I know I said that like three times, but it's important. Um, and so what you can do if you really want is you can get one of those f-stop ICUs and put it into your backpacking bag, but good luck finding one because like right now they're not available until next fall. So you'd just be sitting around waiting. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know, but I got to shoot and I don't have time to wait around until next fall to get a camera bag. So um, I looked at other options like uh, Crumpler has a camera compartment that they sell. Timbuktu has a camera compartment that they sell. Uh, and then there's several other companies that offer camera compartments, including Mountain Smith, which is the one that makes the Ghost 50 I talked about earlier. And um, all of those are valid options. I read the Amazon reviews for all of those in detail, uh, spent a lot of time doing it. And the conclusion I came to was that other than the F-stop bag uh, ICUs, which are fantastic but impossible to get and really expensive, uh, the Timbuktu is the best option. So that's the one I'm going with. Um, maybe down the line I might look at an f-stop ICU if they become available um, but they are really expensive and ridiculously hard to get um, so it doesn't matter how good they are if you can't get one so um, I, so I decided to go with the Timbuktu option and what I'm probably going to do uh, here's another aspect of bag management is um, I'm probably going to get a huge dry bag like this and put the Timbuktu camera compartment inside of it and use that to protect my camera gear from water. Get it, you know, that's if water gets inside and makes it past the weatherproof zippers on the backpack uh, and gets into my camera bag or my, my backpack, then I need to have this inner layer of protection. Now, what I did on the previous two hikes was I used a smaller dry bag for each of my lenses and my camera body. and that works, but you really want to protect as much gear as possible and not as little gear as possible. So it's better to protect your whole camera compartment at once than to let water get inside your camera compartment and then just like, oh, my camera's dry, but my whole camera bag is sopping wet. Like, that's ridiculous. So the other bigger, bigger issue is that every time you go to take a photograph, you have to take your camera out of the dry bag, your lens out of the dry bag, assemble it, put it on the tripod mount, set up your tripod, extend all the legs, you know, then get the shot. And by the time you're done, whoever you're hiking with is like half a mile down the trail in front of you. And it's just a huge pain. So what I'm probably going to do is just put the, uh, the wet, the dry bag around the whole camera compartment and leave it open when I'm in, you know, anything but cr standing in a creek. Uh, and that way all my camera gear is instantly accessible within like one to two seconds. Um, of taking off my bag. Um, so I think that's going to be a better option. Um, so anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Bottom line is the low pro bags are good, but don't count on them for serious backpacking photography, um, like mountain climbing, rappelling, uh, technical trails, long distance trails, rough hikes, none of that. Day hike, even day hiking, like a long day hike, no. Uh, overnight hikes, heck no. Um, but if you're just going to like the beach or something and take some wave photos, you know, they're great for that. Um, and so if you're going to do serious landscape photography, I would recommend uh, a heavy duty backpacking bag instead of the dedicated camera bags. And uh, so that's the general uh, recommendation. And I hope you found this review helpful. I know it's more than a review. It's more of a gear recommendation review combo. But uh, anyway, if you want to check out my work, it's photography.justinlauer.com. I'll put a link down in the description. And uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Have a great day.